Yo, how's it going everybody? Uh, thanks for joining my new channel, Brain Dead. And yeah, it's basically setting up this channel just so I can talk about just different topics that my brain wants to discuss. And so this is the first one. And yeah, so let's get into it. So today I'm going to talk about the Tesla bot and basically why it's so profound. And it's honestly like a huge deal for the world and the economy and no one's really kind of talking about it and so i figured i'll be that first person to kind of kick like get that like a uh, ball rolling i guess and so yeah everyone probably has heard of the tesla bot already but there's just like a quick overview just a humanoid robot that uh in the ideal form should be able to do anything that a human can do just any type of human labor just automate that and the robot can now do it i mean this still has to happen we'll see how like far into the future this ends up being but i don't know to me i look 50 years into the future 2000 years in the future i'm like okay yeah we'll probably have robots at some point so i mean how close are we to this reality is kind of independent as to my argument as to how like, valuable it would be to society but obviously the quicker it comes the more valuable because then you just get to experience it longer and more would i guess result from it given the longer time frame but everything I discuss is kind of irrelevant of how actually down the road it is. I mean, Elon Musk thinks it's, I mean, I don't think he's given an exact quote, but recently there was that tweet where he said that they should have a working prototype by uh, AI day, which he, they moved back to, I think like September 30th. It wasn't like, like August, end of August at some point. So it's like moved back a month and yeah, perhaps then we'll see like a, a working prototype of this. So and then he said that it could be a volume production in like the next year or two. Uh, those, I'm sure those, that's kind of going to be on the more optimistic end of the timeline. But I mean, that kind of gives a scale of this is like only like an order of a few years away. It's not like decades or centuries. Like this could actually be um, reality within our lifetimes. Uh, assuming like Elon Musk's kind of vision of you know, how hard it is to solve is accurate, and yeah, just, we'll see, I guess, but, um, uh, I mean, I, I don't see it as being that insane past the point where they figure out fully self-driving and uh, have a, basically a car that's a robot that can navigate the world and kind of make decisions within it, that it just, instead of, uh, make a robot that has wheels, now as a robot that has legs, I guess there's still training, training that would have to happen of, like, how to balance and walk and, like, navigate the world from that aspect and like go upstairs and that, that type of th thing so it's not like fully self-driving automatically lends itself into being a tesla bot but it's like pretty close so it'll be able to understand like how to discern objects from like uh walkable paths and not run into people and so there would be a lot of carryover um but yeah i mean given that the boston dynamics robots are like doing jumping jacks and backflips and parkour it seems to be like super within the realm of possibility of making a piece of metal and like actual actuators and motors and different limbs kind of learn to stand upright and navigate and tesla is like a top tier ai company so uh if anyone's gonna figure it out i yeah i, I put my confidence in them but okay let's talk about why the tesla bot is actually a big deal First, let's uh, play uh, just audio clips of Elon Musk discussing the profoundness of the Tesla bot, and then I'll kind of go into my analysis and try to make from like an economics point of view why uh, having basically manufactured labor would, is important. Okay, so the first clip is from uh, Tesla's Q1 2022 uh, just uh, earnings call, and here it goes. And then there's, of course, Optimus, which... Uh, I was surprised that people did not realize the, the magnitude of the Optimus robot program. Uh, this, the, the importance of Optimus will become apparent in the coming years. Uh, those who are insightful or look, listen carefully uh, will understand that Optimus ultimately will be worth more than the car business worth more than fsd that's my firm belief okay so yeah that was kind of like an eerie uh prediction by him or <laughs> i just kind of like that we'll like fast forward uh 
20 years into the future and kind of look back at that moment and him kind of like uh, preluding to just like what this opportunity is and just how important it is and no one really kind of getting it. And I mean, like, hopefully I can make the case for why it's so important. Maybe other people start kind of talking about it. Okay, listen, listen to another clip of him uh, at the AI day, kind of yeah, just introduce the Tesla bot and explain kind of its value. Oh, Joe, obviously that was not real. Uh, so Dojo is real, uh, the Tesla bot will be real. Um, but uh, basically, if you think about what we're doing right now with the cars, uh, Tesla is arguably the world's biggest robotics company because our cars are like se semi-sentient robots on wheels. Um, and with uh, uh, the full self-driving computer, essentially the, the inference engine on the car, which we'll keep evolving obviously, and uh, Dojo uh, and all the uh, neural nets, recognizing the world, understanding how to navigate through the world, uh, it, it kind of makes sense to put that onto a humanoid form. Um, and we're also quite good at uh, sensors and batteries and uh, actuators. So uh, we think we'll probably have uh, a prototype sometime next year uh, that uh, is, basically looks like this. Um, and it's intended to um, uh, be friendly, of course, um, <laughs> and uh, navigate through a world uh, built for humans and uh, eliminate dangerous, repetitive, and boring tasks. Um, we're setting it such that it is, um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> and, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so. Uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. So it's uh, it'll be a you know a light a, a light yeah I anyway, don't five miles an hour. You can, you can get okay, so yeah, I think we kind of get the gist. Like I mean, here's some of the stats about it. Like its height and weight and kind of its utility. He said what um, eliminate dangerous, boring, and repetitive tasks for humans. To, it's like first kind of use seems to be just things that humans don't exactly like doing or want to do. Uh, this thing can step in and do those things for us, um, which, yeah, everyone probably immediately sees like, yeah, that'd be a nice thing to have. And um, yeah, sees the value in it, but I guess I'll try to make the case as to kind of why it's profound that, ha uh, yeah, having something like this that can do that. Uh, okay. One more clip. And yeah, this, I think, will be quite, quite profound because if you say, it, like, what is the economy? It is, uh, at the foundation, it is labor. So what happens when there is, uh, you know, no shortage of, of labor? Um, this is why I think long term that there will need to be universal basic income. Um, yeah. But, but not right now because this robot doesn't work. Uh, so <laughs> we just need a minute. <laughs> So, um, yeah, but I think it's, it's essentially in the future, uh, physical work will be a choice. If you, if you want to do it, you can, but you won't need to do it. And, um, yeah, I think it obviously has profound implications for the economy because uh, given that the economy at, at its foundational level uh, is labor, I mean, capital, is, uh, capital equipment is just distilled labor, uh, then um, is there any actual limit to the economy? Uh, maybe not. Um, so, yeah. Join our team and help build this. So, okay. I think that last Elon snippet is a good introduction now into my video and kind of my argument because he kind of started touching on the actual economic value case uh, for the Tesla bot. Like kind of stating that at the foundational level, um, an economy is just labor. I'll try to explain kind of that idea. And... So yeah, let's kind of get into it. Uh, so to understand why the Tesla bot would be um, profound and a big deal to an economy, let's try to even figure out what an economy even is. So okay, so what is an economy? Well, I personally like to view an economy as just one really large machine. Economy is itself. A machine. If you think about like a toaster oven, you plug it in, it converts its like electrical energy into heat energy in a certain way that if something's like pressed against the coils, it 
toasts it or it brings it to a certain temperature that ideally is meant for bread and converts bread into a uh, toast. So a machine is something in which you uh, input it energy. There's some process in the middle uh, in which you could view as labor, that, that conversion process of turning the energy into uh, focusing it into something that creates the end uh, product, in, which is an output. So machine is kind of a, an input. Something that goes into it leads to conversion of energy or labor. And we get an output. Okay, which is also a product. Okay, so yeah, basically a machine is input into some uh, series of different parts that all combine together uh, in the f like a focus of energy that then creates an output. So this, so an example of a machine is as simple as like a computer or a toaster, uh, coffee maker. Once you have a handful of people, you can combine those with uh, other machines. So take four people, put it, them together with four computers or four coffee machines and a building and a piece of land. And now all those components come together, um, give it energy. So in the case of humans, you're giving it food. And um, in the case of the building and the coffee makers, you give it electricity. And all these parts can come together so the inputs were um, food, which is a form of energy, and electricity. And then you got coffee makers and people, and you produce coffee. This in itself has become a machine that converts uh, two different forms of energy into essentially coffee. Um, and every company and corporation is in itself a machine. Uh, Facebook is a s combination of people and computers and desks and rooms and buildings and just uh, the internet and wires and cables and all combines into Instagram and Facebook existing and uh, like WhatsApp and Everything, Oculus, everything under the Facebook uh, yeah, parent company or Meta now, I guess. Uh, that's all in itself a machine. You, you then stack up every single kind of company machine, every uh, like actual device machine, every phone, every <clears throat> human, which in all of their own respects are machines. And the economy is just the outermost machine in which comprises all of those. So to make my example of the coffee company as a machine let me use a couple actual visuals we have a person and we got a machine so okay i mean this is a sewing machine but just for the sake of argument pretend it's a coffee machine i don't think it, it should throw off too many people uh so our machine takes electrical energy the apple also takes like water, obviously. So there's more inputs than just energy. Um, I mean, I guess you could get super fundamental and be like, say that even matters energy, but um, yeah, you, basically there should be a set of inputs, things that you have to put into the system. So you have to put the energy in, you have to put the water in, you gotta put the coffee beans in, and the energy is the food the person eats and the electricity. And then, once you have the inputs, the labor is the ways in which the energy gets converted and focused onto the kind of material inputs. So these two machines will uh, perform labor on the water and the coffee beans to convert yeah, to convert them into a final product that is a cup of coffee. And it's all hot. So yeah, and this whole mechanism is in itself a machine. And just like how a computer is a machine that's made out of like sub machines, I mean, it has um, like a GPU, which can be viewed as a machine, a fan, uh, a keyboard, the monitor, 
they're all in their own respects, their own machines, and they can get combined into like a higher order machine, which is the computer. The same thing is happening here. Um, this larger machine is made of up of submachines like the coffee maker and the um, person and the uh, the water heater and yeah, you know, a handful of machines will all come together to make a coffee shop. And once you take every company in which is their own machine and combine them or view them as submachines to a much grander machine, the most outermost machine in which you can uh, make is as like its own unit is the economy and then kind of vice versa since we're kind of uh, making the term economy almost synonymous with a machine every machine can be viewed as its own uh, sub or economy and sub economy and you have economies embedded within, embedded within economies you got like uh, each state has their own economy each town has their own economy each nation has their own economy and then those kind of all starts blending and each continent seems to have their own economy and like the where uh, economies begins and ends seems to be kind of blurred and vague but at the very outermost shell everything that humans produce any good or service that we make is the most broad sense of what an economy can be so yeah, in essence, an economy is the machine that produces everything that we have. All of our goods and services, the system in which uh, creates that is the economy. And then econ economics should then be the study in which uh, studies that system. And a really important point is that uh, instead of the focus of an economy being on like just the money or like how much like uh, yeah, you know, like profits are being had within an economy and kind of the more numeric numbers financially type elements. An economy that's like irrelevant to the actual economy. It's like almost like information keeping and like uh, keeping track of stuff rather than um, actually what the economy is. The economy is the production of our, everything that we have. The making, the bigger an economy is, it makes more stuff or more valuable stuff. An economy that has more money doesn't really mean anything. Uh, you're Wealth is in relation to how much stuff a person has or can like uh, exchange their money for. It all gets rooted down to the actual quantity or quality of goods and services that's whatever the unit that's being looked at has. So a nation, the more stuff that nation has, the more wealthy it is. Uh, in the, same with an in the individual. The person who has three apples is more wealthy than someone that only has two apples. And money is then just a tool that gets um, placed in the middle of everything so that those goods and services can get exchanged without like having the coincidence of once and you don't have to barter. And it's just like a convenience tool of um, basically tracking everyone's labor rather than actually being the desired commodity to be traded itself. It's like a proxy for trading uh, goods and services for each other. Okay, and to illustrate this point just slightly better, this is a excerpt from uh, Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations. It's, um, I mean, if you want to look it up yourself, it was like the part two, chapter two, book two, chapter two of money considered as a particular branch of the general stock of the society or of the expense of maintaining the national capital. So that's where it is. Uh, page 383, it looks like. Anyways, so basically right here, he's saying how uh, the actual money that like a society has doesn't have really any impact on the revenue of that society. The revenue is purely in the amount of uh, production and it can like create so he says the great wheel of circulation is altogether different from the goods which are circulated by means of it the revenue of the society consists altogether altogether in those goods and in the wheel and not in the wheel in which circulates them it's not in the money that allows them to start being exchanged but the revenue uh, exists within the goods being produced themselves and then kind of on the same message but we have another excerpt that says every savings therefore in the expense of maintaining the fixed capital which does not diminish the pr uh, productive powers of labor must increase the fund which puts industry into motion and, consequent and consequently the annual produce of land and labor 
the real revenue of every society. So the things that uh, a nation produces based on its land and labor is its revenue, not like the actual nominal money coming in. The actual raw output of the actual objects that society creates, the coffee makers, the sewing machines, the rolls of tape, the pens, uh, pins, thumbnails, uh, water bottles, all that creation is the increase of wealth to a nation. And then to support Elon Musk, kind of making the claim that uh, labor is the foundation to every economy, Adam Smith kind of touches on this exact same topic in which he'll, he kind of goes into how how once a humans kind of started specializing he he calls it the division of labor like uh one person will go into blacksmithing another person goes into farming uh the guy blacksmithing gets really good at blacksmithing way beyond uh what the farmer can do and the farmer gets way better at farming way better than what the blacksmith can do and since they dedicate like their lives to that pursuit they get way better and can yield way more production of their given trade than if each person was to try to go and procure procure each good or service themselves. So maybe the blacksmith can make like 5,000 hammers a day and the farmer can make 5,000 bushels of corn or whatever the unit is of corn every day. And because they decided to divide, they have more surplus of that good than they otherwise would have if each, if the blacksmith tried to make hammers and corn every day of what he needed. Total production of this system uh, increases dramatically. But then when each person tries to go trade for what they made, like the blacksmith doesn't want only just hammers in his life. He needs like shelter and food and um, water and uh, different things. So he has to trade what he does for something that someone else does. And this is kind of like then hitting on how labor is the essentially the foundational thing being traded within an economy. Uh, you are trading the goods and services that you make, and those goods and services only come about through some amount of labor uh, that yielded them, basically. So you're trading some amount of hours of your life for some amount of hours of someone else's life, and depending on like how valuable. Uh, that labor was is kind of what you can um, basically trade for and then so the wealth of this kind of mini economy would then be all the hammers that they make and all the corn that they make combined is the wealth of these two individuals like uh, mini economy let me read this little excerpt from uh, adam smith this is a little earlier i think it's like book uh, page 25 so it's pretty towards the beginning and thus the certainty of being able to exchange all of the surplus part of the produce of his own labor, which is over and above his own consumption for the parts of the produce of the other man's labor he may have occasion for, encourages every man to adopt himself to a particular occupation and to cultivate and bring the perfection whatever talent of genius he may possess for that particular species of business. And so that that's kind of uh, Adam Smith kind of describing what I was saying with the division of labor. As you divide, you specialize and uh, production yield increases. And then one man trades what he makes for what another person makes. And then this next quote, but without the disposition to truck, barter, and exchange, every man must have produ procured to himself every necessity and convenience of life which he wanted. So yeah, basically without being able to exchange what you make for what someone else makes, you would have to go make everything yourself and you'll be way worse at it. And you'll end up having less total stuff. You may only have 10 grains of corn every day. Whereas if you divide, you'll have 20 stocks of corn every day. Or like, who knows what it is, but just the idea is you'll, the whole system gains. And so the whole system is more wealthy. And this quote, I won't read it, but basically just saying that this is kind of like where then the role of money comes in is just being that kind of intermediary when you have to exchange what one person makes for another person, what they make, but you might not both want like what each other has. So money becomes then that kind of oil in between to allow like exchange to still occur. And yeah, like resources can just get to where they need to way more fluidly. Like money is a really useful invention, but it's not what the economy is. The economy is the actual yield of production. The things that the people and all the labor and that system creates that is that is the wealth of the economy not the money in which represents it so 
Yeah, I think that was a good kind of like exploration as to what makes an economy bigger or what advantages in the economy. It's basically, can you make more stuff that people want? I mean, just making stuff that people don't want also increases the size of the, inco- of the economy. Like a economy that makes 60 like spiky tennis balls, that it's still an economy that exists. The, but to a degree, wealth is subjective to the desires of the participants of that economy. What things do they want to exist? And having more of those things is then in essence the wealthier economy. And since labor is the backbone of every good or service being produced, the more labor that you have, essentially the larger economy that you can have, the more things you can make. Those are kind of synonymous statements. So being able to manufacture labor is massive. So let me kind of like demonstrate that. So right here we have what? Six Tesla bots when we have six people. Okay, so we have six people and six Tesla bots. Um, say for every three people, and yeah, let me put the machines in too. Okay, and I got some machines. So let's relate back to my kind of coffee shop example. If you combine a certain amount of like parts together in combination with people, like so three coffee machines, two people, a building, a counter, whatever whatever all the pieces is. If you combine all those together, maybe you can make a thousand cups of coffee every day. Like So given a certain amount of uh, uh, components and the same amount of inputs, you should be able to make the exact same amount of output. If you have 30 different toasters and you give each one the necessary amount of energy, each one should be able to make like the same amount of toast, assuming they're like the same like quality of toaster, they do the same thing. Every machine, if you like, kind of give it all the same amount of parts, and you should be able to make the exact same amount of output from them. So, so in this case, we have at each kind of company, you have two employees and one machine, and those amount of parts are uh, capable of producing, say, 10 products. Since each of these machines, aka company, um, has all the exact same amount of parts and like are comp- comprised of the exact same amount of thing, they should be able to do the, the uh, create the same amount of app. But obviously, in a company, uh, some employees are a higher level labor than others. Like some might be kind of slacking off. One person might be a tryhard. One person might be way smarter. Like obviously Tesla, like Elon Musk is kind of like an outstanding employee to have uh, for whatever he's able to produce than like, um, I don't know, just like a random worker at some random company or something like that. So there's different like quality levels of labor, but this, so this is assuming like the labor quality stays constant. Everyone's capable of doing the same amount of stuff. Obviously, if you have like some greater person, then it's not the exact same machine because just like a computer, two different computers might have a GPU. One might be like a $3,000 GPU and the other is like a $500 one. Those two machines are capable of different tasks. So a machine should only be able to produce the same mouse stuff, assuming all the parts are the same. But assuming everything is identical to a machine, all the same like output should uh, also be possible. So you take two people, you combine them with a sewing machine and you can make 10 things. Uh, again, uh, someone kind of realizes that and be like, hey, I want 10 things and they also make a company so they put together the same amount of parts and uh, take two people, combine them with a machine, do the same kind of labor in between, which is conversion of energy and lo and behold, they also make 10 products and then this company does the same thing. They, do, they also result in 10 outputs or products. And now if this is like, a, like I said, economies are embedded within each other and you can view them at different scales. So if you take this three co- company unit as its own economy, now the wealth of this economy is 30 products. Now <clears throat> this company can trade what they make with this company if they like. I mean, if they're all making the same things, then not really a need to do that, but that is essentially what they have to offer to each other is the things that they make. Now, so to the extent that human beings and that labor are parts to the production that we create, which I don't know, the last time I checked, I'm pretty sure every company has human beings in them. I mean, like it seems like Tesla bot is more geared to being kind of like physical labor. So that that is then a smaller selection pool of all labor because like some people are accountants and it's more about like what their mind can do or like maybe some engineer is good at designing something and so there's some forms of labor that doesn't seem like the Tesla bot will touch 
and maybe some other forms of AI end up taking that role. I mean, in my mind, it seems like any form of human labor should be re automated or replaced by an AI. I mean, once you have a general intelligent AI, it should be able to do all things humans can do or better. And so all human tasks, I would imagine, should be replaceable. But to the extent Tesla bot is doing the replacing, it seems to just be physical labor. So that would be a smaller sus subset of all the jobs. But think about every like cashier, every co coffee barista. I mean, like a significant amount of jobs in this world is all about uh, converting like food energy into kinetic energy to perform some physical task in space, basically. And then so to the extent that what is required to make these 10 products is two forms of physical labor, human quality, plus a machine. Well, now if you take one of these Tesla bots and replace the person, you now have all the exact same products, but yet one person didn't have to do anything. So human labor is decreased. The total amount of labor produced or like used is the same, perhaps maybe slightly less. If like the test law is like an AI that can get higher a higher degree of like optimization than like a human brain can get. So maybe so maybe some less amount of labor occurred and you just got some uh higher like labor usefulness and efficiency gain. But the exact the wealth of this economy is still the exact same. It's still 30 products. Now so you make another Tesla bot. Now you still have uh produced all the exact same amount of stuff, still the same 30, but two people didn't have to do anything. So you still have the exact same wealth of the of this economy, uh, but yet two people just got to take it easy. Maybe they can interchange with these people and everyone just has like a more leisurely kind of just quality of life with the exact same ec economic size. But since these two people are now freed, they don't have to do anything. Their days are free. Maybe they start up another product company and now they're making another 10. Now this ec economic size is 40, all the same amount of people but the only kind of additional cost is whatever energy these Tesla bots took. So it's basically being able to just manufacture e economy at the extent where you can just start mass producing these things. And if they become even cheaper than a human being, I mean, they won't need bathroom breaks, they don't have to go to sleep. I guess they need to be recharged, but I guess you can have some redundancy in the amount of bots so that like when one has to go get recharged, the other one's charged up and ready to go. And just there's like, less of a lag of like shifts having to do the same thing you know like a human needs to ramp up in their productivity they're a little bit maybe tired or sluggish at first and then after like an hour or so of working maybe they're at their like peak performance and then after lunch they're tired again or like ready to go home and production won't be this constant thing maybe this is a graph of like human versus bot and on this axis is like productivity productivity and time a human may like start kind of low, get better, and then they peak out, they go to lunch, and then lunch they start back down here because they kind of got tired after they ate, and then throughout the day they get ready, but then, oh, now it's only an hour until they go home, and now they're significantly more demotified and kind of just start looking at the internet or checking their phone more, like, uh, ordering food and looking at like the menus of places now the productivity is like down here like just basically the same as when they came in and so then your kind of like productivity yield that you got from like a certain amount of labor assuming like a tesla bot and a human cost the exact same per unit of time like tesla bot is going to be um way more valuable because like if the area under the curve is like this for human um Let's make a bot red. Maybe when it like first comes onto the semi line, like it has to like get into the right spot. So it might be not like immediate production, but since it's like just programmed in the computer and just like um, code running, what it'll do, uh, it'll like pretty quickly get to like its peak performance and it'll just stay there. Maybe it starts running like out of energy or something towards the end or something like that. And then may like, dip or like who knows it might like be little weird things and it won't be exact flat line but it'll be like this pretty con constant staying thing the whole shift and then now look at this difference in productivity that we got from the tesla bot 
I mean, obviously I'm just drawing this so I could have made it whatever I wanted, but I think the concept is pretty intuitive and I don't think a lot of people are going to agree that a robot is going to be less like slack offish than a human cost benefits. I mean, part of the cost of like paying a human is just the, um, like benefit packages, healthcare, like insurance for like workman com- worksman's comp type stuff. People get hurt. People get sick. Sometimes they're just demotivated. There's morale problems. You have to like pump extra energy into the system and just kind of appeasing people. You have to have some space allocated to bathrooms. Like that's kind of that could be space used for more coffee machines or whatever. Once you just kind of start replacing humans, all the exact same, assuming all the same production can still occur you've just gained efficiency and to the point where you just start mass producing the Tesla bots and each one then becomes marginally less expensive than the previous one. Just with economies of scale, the higher uh, scale you make something, the cheaper each like marginal unit is. Well, if anything could ever be mass produced, I would imagine it's human labor. Like the scale, the, there'll never be a time where you've run out of people that want to order another one, assuming you can uh, create some new form of production from it in which people want and then we'll trade what they make for it so almost the limits are to the point where there's no more things in which to apply physical labor to which i would imagine that we haven't even exhausted all the total amount of things to apply labor to i mean we're still on the same planet what happens when we start going to mars and uh into the solar system and asteroid belt and like there's more physical tasks to be done in this universe. So like to the point where I think we're like close to finishing all physical tasks that we, humans want done, then yeah, maybe Tesla bot kind of runs out of growth opportunities, but I think we're pretty far from that. Or the other constraint would just be literally things that we can even think of making, but uh, I don't know, humans are pretty creative. And once we have this new tool of just basically on-demand labor, I'm sure we'll think of some pretty... Uh, crazy awesome stuff to apply it to so yeah this kind of illustrates like why it's such a massive deal it's basically being able to print economy and remember the the wealth of an economy is the total amount of stuff that you can make so how much more stuff can we make when we can just print as many like human labor nodes as we want that will probably end up working better than a human like uh if I just move each of these bots down to replace these people, then okay, we can make then we can utilize this machine and make a whole another ten. Now we're at fifty, and then we still have two left over, and so that then we can make another ten. And we're at sixty, and then look at that we've doubled the amount of economic output of this economy, and we still have the exact same amount of people. And let's make another thirty Tesla bots, and then now we can uh, make another fifteen times. 10, 100, another 150, and now we're at, what, 200 products. To the extent that we can uh, make a Tesla bot, we essentially increase economic wealth of everyone within the economy. And I would imagine every economy will demand this, and so the wealth of every human should start uh, increasing to the extent they are able to acquire Tesla bots. And then let's just replace all these people with... uh, Tesla bots. Now this whole, all this whole 50 is only Tesla bots. Now these six different people, they might have an idea for a new company and they may recombine and reorganize and make a new thing. And then, so we then have all these 60 or this 50 uh, products plus whatever this new company that these people will turn into. What does that make? And now the economy will be this 50 plus what Maybe these people each combine and now they're making uh, 70 products of something. I don't know. Widgets. So now the wealth of this economy is the 50 products plus the 70 widgets. And now everyone has more because of basically on-demand manufactured labor. So yeah, essentially behind every product and good or service that an economy has, which is the thing in which bestows wealth upon the economy, the actual raw things that people want is labor behind it at this at some point. And once you can start automating that labor, you then pretty much infinitely can increase the amount of stuff that economy has basically at the rate that you can make Tesla bots. So, but assuming it's like one-to-one of like production of humans, Tesla bot, how much stuff do we make right now? Like, 
our global economy is i don't know what it is like u.s economy is in like the 20 the trillion 25 trillion or something, something like that like global economy i don't know let's just say it's like i don't know 50 trillion i don't know what the actual number is but that's kind of a proxy for how much stuff humans are making every year i um, mean it's like the dollar value that the stuff traded for throughout the year and it's like maybe there's high inflation from the beginning of the year to the end of the year and so this may not be like actually accurate indicator to track from like year to year of like knowing the difference of stuff that we made but in essence in essence it's like a proxy to measuring that thing all the um, current amount of like humans in our workforce is currently able of producing like say 50 trillion dollars worth of stuff but now if we replace every human within that loop or within that system now you have doubled the amount of labor and you now you've just doubled the amount of stuff that we can make or maybe it scales differently because now that humans aren't bogged down by like kind of like the dangerous repetitive or boring tasks they can now be kind of more intellectual and maybe think of some more higher order products that actually bring more valuable to the value to the company like things humans want more than just like some better insurance or something like that some things that we place higher economic value to yeah this is kind of my attempt at illustrating why it's a big deal and why being able to print endless amount of labor is basically essentially the same as just being able to print economic size and this should just be a product that almost <laughs> any corporation can utilize assuming they have physical labor as a task that um, their company partakes in so then what's the value of tesla at the, to the point that this like manifests and actually becomes a real product if a chocolate company can always increase the amount of chocolate that they make by ordering another tesla bot they should always have demand to order another tesla bot assuming that that profit that they can make from like the next amount of t uh, chocolate bars they can make is greater than what the tesla bot costs them and that price will depend on how long they've had the tesla bot like there'll be like a time frame in which it like surpasses a human until humans reach the effectual demand of chocolate bars there should always be a need of making a slightly more amount of chocolate bars and at the point where we even do reach that effectual demand where like one more unit produced doesn't change the amount that we like consume and we've just eaten as many chocolate bars as we possibly want like just just stop making them because we already have as many as we'll ever eat i mean then the chocolate company can then start making the ice cream bars or something like that like there's always another next thing to make that humans want and until we hit that next where there isn't that next thing that humans want made then there should always be another marginal demand for purchasing a tesla bot and so this will just basically be a product in which it's just infinitely sold i uh, it's kind of like mind-blowing what this could be and then 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 that has implications on like the value of tesla like i mean it's already it seems very attractively priced based on just a pure raw auto production i mean it's maybe looking the doubling this year from what it produced last year going from like five hundred thousand to a million this year then how many more doublings until i mean assuming like the margins stay the same uh you have maybe at the point where they're making four million cars a year based on current prices like a maybe like a 12x price to earnings like that's a pretty insanely attractive price for like such a high growth company and that's only considering just the auto business and they have like fully self-driving they have uh per, like the solar roof stuff battery energy um their insurance company like whatever else tesla gets into and then they have tesla pot which is just literally printing economy um <laughs> like yeah maybe this isn't getting priced in exactly <laughs> i mean just purely looking at the auto company it doesn't take that many more doublings i mean yeah it has to double two or three more times or something like that like that's the 4x but i mean the company is just now starting to take off and they're dedicating themselves as being like a mass scale production company and manufacturing is their largest competitive advantage i mean they have like a ton of competitive advantages but of one of their highest ones manufacturing is being able to spit out a car in like three different pieces and super streamlining the process eventually reaching four million cars per year when they're already kind of like on the precipice of hitting four or one million this year and some of the traditional automakers are making like six or five million every year so it's like now within like the realm of like never been done before like it seems pretty intuitive that they'll hit that number in the next I don't know five years or so at the point where then they're trading at like a 12x pe at given prices and they have all these other things down the pipeline is like looming kind of value adds that could potentially be even larger than that auto company in the, in in of them in the end of themselves was the total addressable market for solar energy basically 
every building in which uses electricity and has a roof. <laughs> like, yeah, like these things could just are massive markers that can basically play, apply to everything. And this is like the granddaddy of them all being the Tesla bot. But anyways, hopefully that gave some context and maybe like uh, cleared up some things and made it easier for people to imagine why Tesla bot is valuable and a big deal and should be like considered way more heavily as, I mean, like I'm an investor, so I guess I'm viewing it through the lens of being an investment opportunity, but I guess more of just like kind of a economics kind of enthusiast and thinker and crazy to think of how big of an inflection point in like humanity this could be. And so, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. I'll try to do more than if I get some subscribers and stuff. So, yeah, uh, I guess do the normal YouTube things and like it and comment. And if you comment, I'll, I'll try to reply. That'd be cool. But OK, thanks for watching.